This is smithy.tv. The other howlers sing you, the blues now. The other howlers were Allah Akbar, but not the same kind of blues you like to hear. So, <laughs> hey, this is Katie Robinson with my special guest, Steve Kersner. We are, uh, you're in here listening to Breaking Down the News, and we're breaking it down for you. Now, some people are up in arms over uh, the child soldier. Or others call him a traitor. Omar Qadar, he's been transferred to Canada from Gitmo. They finally let him out. And now he's been released on bail while waiting the rest of his trial. So, uh, um, you know, some people are saying like, he should be denied bail. That's a tra tragedy of our Canadian legal system. And others are yelling, deport him. But why can't we deport him? Well, because he was born here. Yeah, Where see? is he supposed to go? And, you know, he's out, on, he's out on bail pending the federal government's appeal of him being out on bail. So he may wind up going back to jail, who knows? Basically, if you, know, if you study the case of Omar Carter, he was mostly guilty of having a bad parent yep. who put him in a, a wrong place at the wrong time. He was too young at the time that he was arrested to have been able to determine his destiny, to make his own choices. Well, he was born to that destiny. They called him the, the first family of, uh, of, of, of terrorists. Yeah, and... and but that's our, our media. Yeah, that's our, yeah, the first yeah. family until the next one. Um, he wasn't raised in a, a, a place of tolerance. He didn't he, play hockey. Yeah, <laughs> neither, neither did I, or at least not well. Um, but he, he, there's a lot of statutes in the world. I don't, mm -hmm. It's not the Geneva Convention, but there's United Nations agreements on the way to prosecute soldiers under a certain age. Right. And they ignored them completely for Cotter. And typically, the Harper government, with their heart on to seem like they're uh, you know, fighting terrorists, while P.M. Harper stands in the broom closet, um, they went with it um, and treated him like he was actually a fully culpable adult. And there's even evidence that what he was arrested for, what he was convicted of, he didn't even do. That he was actually underneath a door the whole time. And he was tortured into co uh, or had coerced into confessing. Rock yeah. music played really loud. Yeah, uh, or Nana Muscuri. And uh, <laughs> but the thing is, our society has reduced conversation about this stuff down to you're with the terrorists or you're with us right and he is a terrorist and um, he was at a terrorist camp I'll give him that and he probably had sympathies at that time but he was a kid um, you can be I, I'm more of the, the notion of we have to be for actual justice we have to look at each case individually and not paint things with a giant brush um, that takes too much time though to paint things individually I know we only have 140 characters on Twitter um, but it's easy when you stand up for Omar Khadr, they say, you're with the terrorists. No, I'm not, I'm not soft on terrorists. I believe that there are certain ways that the world has agreed to treat soldiers or enemy, enemies of war who are under a certain age. Enemy combatants. Enemy combatants. Yeah. And it wasn't followed in this case. And the United States and Canada are two that hold themselves up as beacons right. of democracy and fairness and due process. And they ignored due process in this case. They ignored what was supposed to be done. Um, so in that way, I he's paid his price. He's he's. I think he shows another couple of years left underneath the deal that he. No, but I, as far as I'm yeah, concerned, yeah, he has paid a price. Yeah, let him let him out and watch him. Um, I don't think he's so high profile. He's going to be watched by CSIS for the rest of his life. Everybody. Yeah. So it's not like he's really in danger of actually doing anything at this point. They'd be re better off watching other people. He's too high profile. Um, and how's the guy going to feel about? It reintegrating into Canadian society. Oh, as I don't far care what concerned. they say about it now. He's not going to be embracing everything Canadian. No. Or Western. Why would he? Canada let him let him rot. Like if you're a Canadian abroad, forget the federal government helping you. Doesn't out. matter what you've done. Yeah, they they don't give a crap. That yeah. poor Fami in in Egypt. Government just sat there and grabbed its ankles while Egypt did what it wanted. Or for um, all the years of anybody bust it with a joint, the, you know, they, they used to run an advertisement on TV. The, the, the embassy will not help your ass. Yes, they, they don't give a damn about Canadians outside of Canada. Right. Uh, they just hope you don't make it back in time to vote. Um, so, I don't know what your position is on Cotter, but my position is he got railroaded. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time because he had a bad father who took him there. Most kids, their parents take them to play catch or a baseball game or fishing. His dad took him to a terrorist camp. He had another brother, but, I think, that was killed over there. And another one's pretty much, uh, he was released earlier, but he got pretty much banged up and shot up over there. So, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's like Lauren Green on Ponderosa. It'd be like if he was Little Joe. After <laughs> <laughs> you know, Paul, are we going to get rid of these infidels? You know, so, um, 
you know, there's, there's, a, there's a hardcore side to me that say, well, all this would have been avoided. All the political and legal ramifications yeah. would have been avoided if they had just capped him. If there never was, if they had whacked him, if he had never been taken prisoner, then yeah. we would have just said, guess what, Canada? We, uh, we accidentally clipped one of yours over so here. So you're saying that they were showing respect for due process by not just killing him extrajudicially? Especially through a grenade at a medic. You know, I mean, yeah. think about all the atrocities that, that go on on a, on a battlefield after that. I mean, apparently when Me Lai went down, everybody said it was payback for what Charlie's been doing. Yeah. So I'm thinking, if you just saw a medic just whacked by this guy, you know, the, I, I think there was a compassionate, I mean, he's evil, as they want to say, sending this guy to Gitma was, you know, there wasn't somebody to, you know, to the, to the, to the right of that saying, well, you know what, let's just save all the paperwork and pop, you know? Oh, there was so. probably people saying it, but uh, once he was This public, is not the army, Sarge! Well, you know what, and not that he shouldn't have uh, paid a price. Absolutely. Well, he's paid he, a price. Yeah, but he needs, to, he needs to have learned that, yeah, your father took you here, but you're starting to approach an age where you can start making your own decisions. You don't have to participate when... Well, when, that's 14. That still wasn't going to be happening then. No. Well, yeah. you know what, it, there's no reason he couldn't have just run and hid. Um, when, the, <laughs> when the Americans were coming in, when coalition soldiers were coming in, there's no reason he couldn't have run and hid. Um, the fact that he had his face out there, I wasn't there, I don't know what happened, but yeah. he needs to understand this is not acceptable. You call yourself a Canadian, you can't work against the interests of your country. He needed to pay a price. Right. But I think that they made him a poster boy for something he wasn't. I think his mother and sister running their mouths didn't help much sympathy for Oh, his mother, either. that interview in McLean's that I ran a few years ago. Would you want uh, your children around homosexuals and yeah. drugs? I mean, she could be running with the Tories now had she not been so <laughs> anti-Canadian with it all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if she just waved the flag, and supported building more prisons, and she could be a Tory candidate. She's saying, I want, a, I want our women less scantily clad in public. Is that such a bad thing? I want rapists punished with their hands cut off. I want harder on crime. I don't think rapists get their hands cut off. I think they no. get stoned. Or they get to throw rocks at the victim that accused them. I'm not quite yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm not sure how that works. All I know is it's not good for the victim, either way you shake yeah, it over yeah, there. Yeah. You know? but, um, it, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens when he gets, when he gets uh, his retrial as well. Um, we'll see. A retrial now? Well, what's he doing? He's on well, bail. Yeah, pending, well, pending the appeal the of appeal. the Harper government. Yeah, yeah. Pend that's what I mean by the retrial. Pending the appeal. We'll see. If he gets the appeal, or maybe he's got it, and he, we'll see what happens. Well, I wonder how many documents from the Harper government will have to be subpoenaed. Um, or found. Or found. I think more likely they'll clear, claim their national secrets and bring stuff fully blacked out. Um, I can see why Harper doesn't want this guy to have an appeal, because if they start pulling out documents showing how complicit Canada was with the U.S., just did whatever the U.S. wanted, and how they really uh, tried to make this guy uh, an avatar for homegrown terrorism, um, I think it's not going to look so good on Harper. And Canada was total, I mean, the United States were saying earlier, will you take this guy back? It was yeah. almost push me, pull you, push me, pull you, yeah. you know? And so, they didn't want they didn't want him here. Yeah, I mean and that's what's supposed to be repatriated to your home country. And that's the reason why they couldn't get a lot of the guys out of Gitmo is because their home countries are going, We don't want this or yeah. if you give them to us, we're gonna torture the fuck out of them, you know. Yeah. So it's uh you know, they, there's a well, maybe they'll let him out and they'll they'll let him keep the bail because hopefully maybe they'll have to use his bunk for some senators. But uh, <laughs> I don't know if Duffy would fit on a bunk that fit Omar Cotter. Well, I think he'd be on the bottom. Pull them together. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You think Duffy would be a bottom, do you? I don't think he's getting out on that top bunk. <laughs> okay. I don't think he's gonna jump his butt up on there. You know. So, okay, one more thing before this, before we get out of here, the uh, Cotter thing. Now, uh, should he be? You think there's any way he's gonna wind up being financially compensated by our government? Because uh, you know, I, once you get back here and you beat some terrorists, but the next thing you do is sue the government. Well, right? first he'd have to win on appeal. Right. You can't sue when you've been convicted. I don't think you have to be wrongfully convicted. So, and I'm not speaking as any kind of expert, but I think if he wins the appeal, it's a given he's going to sue the government. Everybody who wins an appeal says they were wrongfully prosecuted, lost years of my life, and they sue. Right. Um, if he sues, do I think he should get money? That's a very, very tough one. Um, it, my immediate reaction is no. Uh, get on with your life. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, need six million dollars to get on with my life. What, do you want to be bionic? <laughs> um, the, uh, yeah, the guy, things, wrong things were done to him. Um, and that's why I look at it from a logical point of view. 
yeah, he's if other people are able to uh, are eligible to get compensation for wrongful dismissals if he wins the appeal, then he should get some money. But the emotional side of me says no. Uh, let's just you know go on with your life now, learn a lesson, stay away from these people. Um, move on. And if you ever have children of your own, mm. don't take them. To yeah, don't. Yeah, <laughs> take them fishing. Yeah, take them to a Jays game. Yeah. You're not going to get in trouble there. Fly some kites. I know they were banned in Afghanistan while you were over there, but you know, do some do some things. Do some Western things. Yeah, that's a, a fine bit of advice, though. I doubt he's watching. Oh, and I don't think he's listening too much to anything these days. I mean, I mean, wonder how much hate and anger and resentment that guy has inside him. How much? How much would you have? Uh, I'd be a hell of a jihadist. I'd be more. I'd be more bent on it then than I was when I went in. Yeah, it's uh, not exactly restorative justice what he was uh, what he was subject to. No, and uh, e even if they hadn't have put him in there, I think after killing his father, killing his brother, and then this is what you were growing up with. Uh, I I don't know if the tiger's going to change his stripes. I just well think once the once the if he didn't have an opportunity to change or reason to change, he would have. I mean, people giving their lives for that cause are seen as heroes. You've right. done them a favor by killing them, in a sense. So would he be mad and say, my family lost their life for this cause? No, at that age, it probably would have further inculcated Martyrdom. them in the, yeah. in the, in the, 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 the lifestyle and thoughts. But, uh, <laughs> lifestyle. Terrorist is a lifestyle, pal. <laughs> own magazine. Yeah, a, yeah, that's right, Terrorist Lifestyle <laughs> Magazine. The, the, the ten best uh, furnished uh, hideout caves. What is what is a suicide bomberist wearing this fall? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Funny stories. Which piece of the suicide bomber landed on you? <laughs> Actually, you know what I, th I thought was very funny? We've got to wrap this segment up. Um, you know, they always have these uh, these terrorist schools, training schools. Yeah. You know, and, they, it, and I'm thinking, but you know what? They never have many class reunions. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah, they don't get together 10 years later. There's like one guy with one leg. I'm a failure. I lived. You yeah. know, so. <laughs> Voted most likely to go bluey. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so it's and 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 if any members of any of the uh, anti-Western uh, 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 extremist groups are uh, watching us, we thank you for checking us out. I'm Kenny Robbins here with Steve Kurtzer. This has been uh, this has been uh, breaking down the news, and uh, we'll be breaking it down for you again soon. Thanks a lot.